All right, guys. Hey, good morning. Welcome to the FFL Sky's the Limit call. My my guest today that I'm very uh, very I'm excited to have because I've been able to uh, get a chance to watch him grow in this business. And most importantly, you know, we're somehow related. I'm trying to still figure that out, but uh, we're not even on the same team, which is why you recruit everybody you know. But anyways, this is Harold Durana, uh, FFL Illuminate, a sales machine. And he's built his entire business going virtual, or I should say phone sales, because he just said he didn't do any Zoom and his team doesn't do any Zoom. Harold, <laughs> welcome on board, man. Thanks for hopping on with us. Well, man. Appreciate you having me. Hey, so um, tell us a little quick background for those of you that don't know who you are. Like, you know, what have you done? How did you find FFL? All that good stuff. You kind of share that with everybody. Yeah, absolutely. So prior to FFL, I was actually working with a practice company. And, you know, I was there for a long time, built a big agency over there. How long were um, you there? I was there actually 12 years. You were there for 12 years? 12 years. Oh, my yes. gosh. Comfort, convenience, efficiency was really really big for me. I mean, you, you, you're there for so long and it's just, it's just second nature for you. So it's like, why you don't want to leave, right? That comfort. And and it destroys you, of course. But, um, you know, um, I was there for a while, did really well. It was, you know, sure. I I did well. And it just, it's, you know, wasn't what I wanted, right. When you get towards the end, you're kind of like, man, it's not, I'm not growing and my people, I'm making money, but my people aren't. And that was the biggest issue. So I actually had talked to um, Isaiah uh, with uh, FFL Elevate. He had talked to me, you know, a lot of people have tried to recruit me to come uh, work with uh, FFL, but the way he came to me was a lot different than everybody else. Everybody was just like, yeah, come over here, make a lot of money. You're going to be, you're going to do great. And I'm just kind of like, well, dude, I'm already making money. So it doesn't really make sense for me to leave. I'll be all right. But really where he hit me, you know, hit me in the mouth was, what about your guys? And I was right. like, oh, that's a hard one. To, that's a hard pill to swallow. I was like, what do you mean? What about my guys? Well, look, let's think about your bottom totem pole guy. You know, let's say they only write, like, let's just say four or five, uh, four to five policies a month. Right. Okay. Of the month. <laughs> yeah. So it's like, can't really survive off of that. Right. But, you know, when the comp structure is different. You know, the carrier contracts are different and you get your, your comp is better. It, it changes. So right. That's really where he hit me. It was like, your people will have a better chance. Right. I was like, oh, wow. And that's the right there. The rest is history. That's crazy, man. So you, you were, you were working with that practice company for 12 years. Yeah. Right. And, um, and you, like you said, dude, like for those of you that are listening, that that's a nugget right there. Like most The problem I see with FFL, especially in our recruiting platform with most of the agents, is we all recruit the way that everybody else try to recruit you with. Hey, we pay more, come work with us, which is it it is a fact, but it's like it's not personable. And what Isaiah did, that's that's why he's a professional. It's easy to go. I get I get it, Harold. You make good money. But what about your guy that is, you know, number 35 on your team? Right. Like, how about him? And and you're like, man, that's right. You know, so. And that's why I'm, I'm always a big fan. You know, it's like success is what you got, but like significance is what you create for others. And it's like, if it's just about you, man, you ain't going to last very long. Right. Mm-hmm. And that's what we've seen with the whole industry. So um, cool. So you came over here and, and were you strictly doing virtual back then where you were too, or how did you pick that up? All virtual over there. I came here, told Isaiah, I was like, Hey man, I'm going to do virtual. I'm not going in the field. And he was like, yeah, that's not going to work. <laughs> like, it doesn't work. Nobody does it um, you're going to have a hard time. And I was like, well, you know what? I'll just try it and see what happens. Right. And, you know, my first week, it's funny when we were talking about zoom, I did actually do my first week zoom. The first week here, I was like, all right, well, I'm used to zoom. Let's do zoom, start doing zoom. And then he actually had told me, was like, Hey, you don't have to do it on zoom. You can do it through the phone. And then I was like, why didn't you tell me this? <laughs> <laughs> right. So yeah, now I do everything through the phone. That's you know, awesome. Whole, man. And, and the people that you, your whole team does it too, which is yeah. fascinating. How do you train agents, especially with the ones that come in that have no sales experience? Right. Well, our office is quote unquote Zoom. Right. Right. So everybody shows up to the office, you know, so it, it's actually, it can, it can be easier because you can train more people at one time. Right. But what, I mean, so how do you set that expectation? Because a lot of people come on Zoom and I'm pretty sure you see this, their cameras are off, they're, they're not mute, you know, they're unmuted. 
uh, or they're muted. Like they just, they just don't want to participate. Like, what do you do in that situation? Sure. Sure. Good question. Our thing is, is that um, if you're going to show up to the office, show up to the office to work. Plain and simple. If you're going to show up to the office and you're not going to have a camera, there's no point in being here. Why, why be here? What's the point? I'm not going to force you to be here. Right. Like, I don't, I don't, there's no set time for you to be here. Just show up and be ready to work. And we have breakout rooms where if it's specific training, you can go to like a specific room for mortgage traction, for internet leads or live transfers or just a meeting room, one-on-one -on -one room. So it's, it's set so that you're going, you're, you're showing up for work purposes. Right. So when you, and when you hire people or let me take that, when you recruit people, you set that off right off the bat. Like if you hop on Zoom and you don't have your camera, don't even bother to hop on. Mm -hmm. Yeah. We got that expectation that, Hey, Zoom, the whole purpose of Zoom is for work purposes. If you're, I don't need you to show up to Zoom just to be there. That's not the point. It's there for support, help, training. Right. So how do you, so how do you, like, let's say I'm a brand new agent, right? Mm -hmm. I joined the group. I joined your team. I joined the Zoom. I'm a camera on. How do you teach agents how to sell over the phone and virtually? Sure. So a couple of things before you get started, we have you, you know, like, like a virtual boot camp, basically, right? Right. So you'll go through a series of videos, watch certain videos, need to know the products video, need to understand how the leads work. Uh, we use Quote Tool, the insurance Quote Tools. Mm -hmm. So there's a basic tutorial on how to use it. So uh, you got to learn that. So that way we have some context so that by the time you get to the Zoom, you actually know what's going on. You, right. know, you understand the different types of products to a certain extent. You don't need to know everything, right. but you know what we're already, the basis of what we're talking about. So that when I'm sitting with you and I can talk to you about CBO, I can talk to you about um, final expense, you know, which carriers to go with, you already have an understanding of it. Like a baseline. And yeah. So you have that baseline. Ba uh, from there, we'll take it so that. For example, the insurance toolkits. I want to make sure you actually know how to use it. So let's do a quick little walkthrough. You watch the tutorial. Let's make sure you know how to do it. Right. So we'll walk through that. Got it. Now, that, that's what I wanted to find out, right? Because when we were talking the other day, you're like, dude, like insurance toolkit is like, is like the standard in what you guys use. And you guys actually tell clients, hey, I'm actually inputting your info in a system right? Like, how has that been beneficial for you and your clients when you're literally doing the virtual stuff? So um, what's great is um, when it comes to virtual, so it's, it's a huge mindset thing. It's, it's a lot of people are like, well, I don't know how you do virtual. Like, it's crazy. Like, I, I can't do it. Well, it's just a mindset thing. You just got to turn that switch on because everybody does everything on the phone nowadays. Right. So it, it's a difficult thing to you you know you can't teach an old dog new tricks right sometimes you get you get that like i want to be in the field i did the field for 10 years right my sister virtual so you could uh, you couldn't convince me virtual was better back then but switching it's just now it's the new norm it's like don't make it weird right it's just like don't make it weird take care of your clients you know uh one thing i took from one of your videos was just be that you know disgruntled state employee who's just right. trying to do their job that's all it really is just do your job Take care of your clients. Don't make it weird. So it's right. just a huge mindset switch. See, and that's that's the thing, right? Like, because we were talking about like word tracks and how, you know, the certain things you say on the phone and like the little 1% tips, like you said, right? Being a disgruntled state employee and not being too high, not too low. Like, why is that, Harold? It's because when you call customer service, it's just so, <laughs> you talk to any customer service, they're just like, hey, I'm just trying to do my job. Right. You know, and, and you just doing your job relieves that sales pressure, right? Of just like that commission breath, trying to force a sale out of this client. You don't need to do that. The, they, they inquired to you. <laughs> it's like, they already asked you for help. You right. don't need to convince them that they need it. They're already convinced that they need it because they filled out a form in order for us to contact them. Right. So it's just a matter of walking them through the process. That's what I'm here for. I'm going to walk you through the process. First things, uh, a couple of things that we usually do is like right off the bat is I send you my license. You know, whatever state it is, here you go. Here's my license. Okay. Did you get it? All right. Fantastic. So you could either, you know, hey, you want me to walk you through the state website so you can go ahead and look me up or is that going to be okay for you? Cool. Got the license. Good to go. Right. You know, from there, just following a process, which is what exactly are you looking for? Okay. 
um, understanding why they want it, assumptive closing the whole way through, giving them that agenda of, hey, this is what we're gonna do, and then we're gonna fill out an application, okay? So the agenda part of it needs to be very, very assumptive, okay? Explain so that. dive into that. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So it's very assumptive. So for example, in the beginning, you're explaining him, explaining to the client like the, the process itself, right? You're just going and saying, hey, I'm going to be the rep that's going to be helping you. I was assigned to your case. Now, um, how it works is that, you know, I'm this state field underwriter. I'm going to go over some questions with you, uh, figure out what you can qualify for you. I do the basic underwriting. Also, just so you know, uh, Stephen, I'm a full service representative as well. So what that means is that when you pass away, I'm going to be the one that helps your family through that claims process. Does that make sense? Yep. All right. Now, since we work with all the different carriers throughout the state, we make this process super easy for you. I'm going to do all the shopping. So what I'm going to do is that instead of you having to call every single carrier to get all the different rates, I'm basically your concierge service. I'll be able to pull them all at one time. Concierge so a, service. Yeah, I have a tool here that uh, I input all your information in, pulls all the rates. The companies will compete for your business. So it's all assumptive. I'm already telling them, hey, I'm going to be your rep. When you pass away, I'll take care of your family. Don't worry. You know, and I even tell them, hey, I'm going to go through all the different things. So I'm going to ask you some medical questions. Um, I'm going to go over some finance questions to evaluate your need for coverage, go over coverage options that fit within your budget. Uh, and then the last thing that we're going to do is I'm going to help you submit your application to the carrier for coverage. Right. You're telling them the whole way. Like, this is yeah. what we're doing. You're not this going, hey, if the price is right, like you <laughs> think you want to do something, you're very assumptive the whole way. Yeah, and I love that concierge service. Like you're, hey, I have I have a tool that makes all the insurance companies compete for your business. Yep. Right, and so you don't have to do it. I'm going to do it for you. Love that, dude. Yeah, that's great. So, okay. So the other thing that I wanted to find out too. So, like, let's say you get me on the phone, right? And and it's just me, but you know I'm married. What do you do with that situation? Do you book it for a following day? Do you literally, you know, try to one call close me right then and there? Like, how does that all happen? Um, same day, either I'm going to book you for the same exact day. What time does your spouse get home? And then uh, like four, four. All right. Perfect. So I have a, I have a little gap between four 30 and five. I'll go ahead and give you a call back then. Okay. And your spouse is going to be available. Your spouse is going to be home. Yeah. All right. Just let her know. It's going to be about a 10 to 15 minute phone call. So it shouldn't take very long. Shouldn't interrupt your, uh, your day too much. Right. See, and I love, okay. So like the other thing that I'm, I'm listening to, right. Cause I'm not just watching, but I'm listening to. It's like, you're like, yeah, it's going to take like 15, 20 minutes and, you know, just make sure your wife's there. Like you're the disgruntled state employee, bro. Yeah. You know what I mean? You're not like, Hey, make sure your wife's home. And uh, it's going to be like 10 or 15. Like, no, no. Sound like you hate your job <laughs> yeah. for some odd reason. It works really, really well. And I can't figure it out why, but everybody that's a top producer says so. Yeah. You know what I mean? And so like, for me, it's such a big deal. Okay, cool. So do you, do you Calendly text me? How do you remind me that I have an appointment? Like, how does that all work? Calendly works or even just personalized text messages from you, like from the same number that you call them with, send them a text message, reminder, usually every 30 minutes or 15 minutes before. Okay. So that's the other question I want to dive into because a lot of people ask me this all the time, right? They're like, Hey, do I use burner phone burner? Do I use ring central? Do I use ringy? Do I use, you know, you know, dial, they're like, there's so many phone systems out there, right? Yeah. What do you guys teach and why do you guys use that? Everybody uh, uses phone burner. Uh, gets a whole bunch, you, everybody gets a bunch of phone numbers. So that way when you're dialing out, because we work all different states. Right. Because it's virtual, all the different states, all the different time zones. It's a lot of work to keep trying to change your phone number over and over and over and over again. It's just not, it's not going to work. So right. you got to have that phone burner where it's just automatically changing. What Some do you people, do with the, the, the scam likely numbers? So with phone burner, you could actually switch phones out, phone numbers out. So periodically, like once a month, I'll shut all those phone numbers out and then get new phone numbers. Got it. Because okay? either way, when they call it back, you have call forwarding, it'll go to your cell phone. No way. Yeah. Okay. You could have it call forwarding and just boom, directly to your phone. Got now, um, for me, sometimes even like, I'll just call with my phone. <laughs> like everybody's like, you just call with your cell phone. Yeah. Why not? Right. I call with my cell phone. Here's what's cool too, is that if you send them a text message prior, you know, Hey, this is Harold. Okay. When you call them, you know, if you have an iPhone, it'll say might be, you know, Harold. Ooh, that's a nugget right there. For those of you that don't know, 
Yeah, they're iPhone users. It logs the yeah. contact because of the name. So it says yeah. maybe Harold instead of scam likely. Yeah. So if you send that text message prior to the phone call and then just call, like once you see that it's sent, boom, then you call, it'll show up. Mm, that's that's a nugget right there. So you guys only use phone burner. You don't use anything else. Yeah, phone burner. I'm trying to think. I mean, yeah, we some people have a burner app where you know they get because right. some people prefer actually to dial themselves. Right. You know, it's kind of crazy to me, but yeah, some people do. Right. I do too. I actually like it sometimes, just dialing straight through. Gotcha. Yeah. Cool, man. That's actually money. Um, you know, one of the things that I wanted to hear, like, how do you set the table in, in your phone presentation? I was gonna say in home, but you, you don't go in home. Mm -hmm. How do you set like like let's say you get me on the line, you verify the information, right? Like, hey, this is Harold, I'm getting back to you about the form, blah, blah, blah. You verify my date of birth, address, all that stuff. At that point, how do you set the table for what's going to happen in this appointment? Like, how, how are you going to get me to go, yeah, I want it? Or, or how do you, what do you, what questions do you ask? So right in the beginning, so it's kind of, we're going to go towards the beginning. Now, from there, I'm going to ask him if you have 10 to 15 minutes. So, hey, do you have 10 to 15 minutes? We can go ahead and knock this out right now. Right. Asking yeah. them if they have time to do it right now. That's a big thing. Yep. Instead of just assuming because they might be at work. Yeah. If you have 10 to 15 minutes, we can just go ahead and knock this out right now. Got it. Most of the time when somebody picks up, it's especially if it's not a number that they they know, it's usually they have 10 to 15 minutes. Right. You know, because usually it's like if they're at work, they're obviously it's not not an emergency call. So most of the time they don't pick it up. Right. Um, you'll get those occasionally, but you know, just letting them know, hey, it's gonna take about 10 to 15 minutes, depending on your questions, though. Might take a little longer if you have a lot of questions, but it should be pretty go. quick. Gotcha. Always letting them know that it's gonna be quick. Right. He's like, all right, this is going to take me like 20, 30 minutes. Like, yeah, no, I'm, I don't got time for that. Right. 10 to 15 minutes real quick, depending on your questions. So I go, boom, I got 10 or 15 minutes. What do you go right into next? Cool. First thing that I do is, oh, hey, I'm going to, you know, before we get started, they have me send me, send my license out to you. Is this a cell phone that takes text messages? Yeah. Yeah. All right, great. I'm going to go ahead and trigger that text message. Let me know if you got it. My system went ahead and sent that out to you. Received. I got it. Cool. Now, it's funny because people are like, well, what's the system? Because people are asking me, like, you just said you triggered the system. Like, hey, how do I get that to work? No, dude, I just sent him a text message. Right. It's <laughs> again, more attractive, baby. <laughs> but it's like I'm, I'm sending my uh, my system is going to send a text message out. Now, from there, uh, I'm asking them what they're looking for. What exactly are you looking to protect? Was this going to be to pay off a mortgage so your family can keep the home? Final expenses like burial cremation? Or were you, were you just looking to leave something behind to the family? Got it. So you're asking them a, a loaded question because they have to answer one of those three. Mm -hmm. So let's say I'm, I'm just looking for something to leave behind in my family. Okay, fantastic. Now, from there, is this your first time shopping for life insurance? Have you done this before, Stephen? Uh, I have not. You have not? Okay, not a problem. Do you already have something in place? I don't. Okay, nothing to work, nothing that you know. Okay, so this is your first time getting insurance? Yep. All right. Well, I'm going to try to make this as easy as possible for you so you don't have to make any more phone calls. Okay. Love that. So letting them know right off the bat, I'm going to take care of you. Don't worry. I got you. Right. You know, so this is brand new coverage. I right. So let's say I, I, I have. Okay. I have gone through um, and looked at, you know, other, you know, or I have shopped around for life insurance or I have life insurance. What do you say at that point? Got it. Or what are you looking to add to it or are you looking to replace it? That's good. Uh, add to it. Add to it. Okay, great. Now, what exactly were you, were you just, something to leave behind the family? Yeah. A little more. Okay, great. So from there, I, I'm going to go and just start going through the process. I'm going to let them like, okay, I want to add more coverage. And they're kind of usually most of the people are simmering on like, how much do I really want to add? Like, what do I want to do? Mm -hmm. What You know, or if like, let's say your final expense, I'm already giving you like letting you know what the coverage is going to be. You know, for final expense, typical coverage, 10, 15, 20, 25,000. Okay. But I don't ask you a question. I just throw it out there because you'll get some people to be like, oh, but I want 50,000. Okay, cool. Now I know down the way, I'm, it's not a question. It's just a statement that I'm throwing out there to see if they make a, they bite on it. If they tell me I want 10,000, 15, 20,000, I'm good. Right. I know exactly where I'm going the whole way through. But let's say they give you some astronomical number and their health doesn't match. Yeah, not a problem. So my job is just to see what you can qualify for. Okay. Again, it's all based on your your uh, your age and your health. So if they say I want a hundred thousand dollars, two hundred thousand dollars, I'm gonna go with it 
-hmm. because when I get to a certain part, I'm going to explain the different types of life insurance. Right. And I'm going to tell them what they're getting. So again, let's say they're older. Okay. And um, 76 years old with cancer and Mm -hmm. he wants a hundred grand. Yeah. So if they're getting to that point, when I get to the different types of insurance, you know, based on your health and your finances, this is what you can qualify for. Okay. So, or I'm going to push them towards the, if they're depending on their age, I'm going to push them towards the accidental part. Right. And I'm going to tell them that this is what they were looking for. I'm going to say, Hey, you saw those ads. This is what this is. The accidental death benefit. If you pass away, do an accident, car accident, you know, fall off the roof, hit by a car, anything like that. Okay. This is what you're, uh, what that ad that you were looking at is. Okay. This is going to be able to get you hundred thousand X amount of dollar, you know, 20, $30 a month or whatever it may be. I point them in that direction because you already know, like they're watching these ads or looking at these things mm-hmm. or they're like 35 based on a 35 year old, a hundred thousand, $28. And yet it's like, again, based on your age and health, but I will point them in the direction that I need to go. So if it's accidental, I'm going that way the whole way through. Right. And at a company, you know, at the company you used to work at, I mean, shoot, y'all were known for 15,000 hour face and like 200 grand of accidental. Exactly. You know what I mean? And then you talk to a client, they're like, ah, $300,000 worth of insurance. She's like, what the heck? No, you don't. Because you go back and look at the policy and you're like, it's 250 of accidental. It's like 15 Gs of actual yeah. whole life. It's it's funny. Like one of my guys is, uh, he's just, it's like, his name is Chris Gartside. We're just like, it's the Gartside special. He writes a lot of accidental. He'll move them over to accidental. And his line is just every single time he goes, hey, Steven, you're going to die. You're going to die uh, one of two ways. Natural causes or an accident. Right. This is going to cover you for, he pushes it. He hope do 500,000. And if it's due to a common carrier, you get a million. If it's due to, you know, uh, what is it? Auto pedestrian, you get an additional 25%. Right. And they see that. Do you guys throw that on mutual of Omaha or do you throw that with America? Mutual of Omaha. Got it. Cause I was going to say that app is grueling for guaranteed advantage. No, it takes like five minutes. Does it? It's like 15 pages. It feels like oh. a stupid pipeline thing. No, it's pretty quick. It's pretty quick. Okay. Get down in like five minutes easily. Boom, boom, boom. Fill it out. Get the beneficiary bank. There's no HIPAA. So right. You're going straight through. Got Thank it. You. So you guys are so you guys are basically selling them a whole life stack with a uh, accidental right on top. If need Got be. it. That's good to know. Cool. So after you close me, let's say let's say we get to the point. How do you show options? Do you make people write it down? How do you break it down for them to actually see it? Yeah. So go ahead and write, grab a piece of paper. Let me know when you got that. Okay, you got it. All right, I'm going to have you write down three different things. So let's say uh, final expense. Majority of the time, you're getting a lot of final expense on the uh, instant internet, um, live transfers. It's a lot of uh, final expense. So go ahead and grab that pen and paper. Right, I'm going to have you write three things. Okay, write down. 20,000, 15,000, 10,000, or whatever, you you know, whatever their age is, 25, 15, you know, 20, 15, but let's say 20,000, 15,000, 10,000. Okay. Were you able to write that down? Yep. Okay, great. So I have 20,000 going to be hundred dollars a month. Okay. If you pass away due to an accident, it's an additional 20,000. Right. Okay. So your total coverage there is 40,000. Nice. Okay. You got 15,000, okay, uh, that's $75 a month. If you pass away due to an accident, it's an additional 15,000. Total coverage, 30,000. Right. Okay. Now you have 10,000, okay, that's gonna be $50 a month. If you pass away due to an accident, it's an additional 10,000. Total coverage there is 20,000. Okay, were you able to write those down? Yep. Okay, great. So. What I'm doing is I want them to know coverage, premium, additional coverage, and then total coverage. Okay. We do it, do it in that manner for a reason. It's because a lot of times, here's the thing. When you tell somebody a coverage amount and then you tell them the price, what are they listening to? Now, what are they thinking about the whole entire time? Price. The price, the whole right. time. That's it. Because you stopped at the price, but I'm not going to stop at the price. Mm. I'm going to go coverage. Here's what it costs. Oh yeah, by the way, if you pass away due to an accident, it's an additional 15,000, which brings your total coverage to 30,000. Like, hey man, oh. if y'all ain't taking notes, that, that's a million dollar nugget right there. Yeah. That is a million dollar nugget right there. So yeah, so I'm not, I'm not ending it on 
premium. I'm ending it on, hey, this is your total coverage. Because you, you can think about well, how they're writing this down. They're like 20,000 and they're like, oh, 75 bucks. Oh, wait. And then you're like, plus 20,000 on the side equals 40,000. You could just imagine how they've right. been writing it down. And, you're, and now they're looking at price, 40,000, price 30, price 20,000. And they're like, oh, okay, this is a lot more coverage than I thought I was getting. Right. Love okay. that, dude. And, and then from there, uh, I, I think about for myself, a big mistake for a lot of people, like I don't like doing it, is I don't even ask them what they want yet. So a lot of people are like, oh, don't you want to ask them like which, which option they want to do? I was like, no, not yet, because you still have them in the frame of mindset of coverage and premium. I don't, I don't want to ask them the buying question yet when they're still only thinking about premium. Right. Because now they're thinking about a bill. They're thinking about how much you know, they're not thinking. They're not in the right train of thought, I guess you could say. Right. right? So I want to hit them again and go, hey, Stephen, just to reiterate how this policy works, it's permanent coverage. It's never going to expire. Death benefit is guaranteed. You know, the uh, premiums are guaranteed to remain level. This passes to the beneficiary of your choice, which is your wife to know. Um, then this is going to avoid any probate in court when you pass away. Also, uh, the death benefit is tax-free. Okay, so your wife will receive it tax-free. Do you understand how, uh, what you're going to be covered for? Yep. Okay, great. So instead of how much, because that's pretty common, which one do you want to do? No, right. I'm going to... Let me cement this again. Let me go ahead and remind you why you're doing this. And they're like, okay, cool. Now I know why. And then still, again, sales pressure, right? People are still on the own. When is this guy going to tell me to buy? Right. Like, no, I'm not. I'm still not going to tell you to buy. Okay. I'm going to get, you know, reiterate a couple more things. Just, you know, hey, take care of this while you're young and you're healthy. Okay. That's why you want to get this done as soon as you can. Um, hey, keep in mind, Stephen, uh, you know, as things change, finances change, you could always add to your coverage later. That makes sense? Right. Okay. Now, you know, based on your health, your finances, and current situation, which option do you want to start with? The middle one. Perfect. Go ahead and grab your ID. And uh, they're going to have me ask you a couple more questions. So with that, they're expecting you to, when you think about a salesman, they're expecting you, you want me to get the highest amount, right? That's what your right. expectation is like, hey, just keep in mind, you know, as things change, finances change, you could always add to your coverage later. Right. You don't, you don't have to do the highest amount. You could do the middle one. Five years, you know, a year from now, two years from now, we can increase. Something is better than nothing. Would you agree? Yep. Exactly. And when you ask them for their option, I'm asking them which one you want to start with, with the assumption that later on we're going to increase this. Right. Which one you want to start with? Because, again, no sales pressure, right? It's like, oh, I'll just start with this one. That's fine. Right. This is what word tracks, bro. And see, this, this is why people that come from your practice company sell circles around almost everybody else here <laughs> at FFL. It's like, this is the stuff that we, we don't, I wish we did better job of teaching is, you know, relieving sales pressure, number one, but getting people to buy. See, like, that's the other thing that like good, good sales folks, they don't sell insurance. Their, their clients buy insurance. It's a different place to be in. You know what I mean? And so- when your client's making the decision, but you're guiding them along the way the whole time, dude, that's what great sales folks do. And that's what you do, man. It's really, it's really nice to see. Yeah. And you're guiding them through the whole process because you're already letting them know we're going to fill out an application. I make sure I always ask what their beneficiaries right off the bat in the beginning. Who's going to be your beneficiary? You know, when, when you pass away, who's going to be the one picking up the pieces, taking care right. of that funeral, taking care of the home? Who is it? Right. And right off the bat, they're like, oh, it's going to be my son, my daughter, my wife. And you're like, right. okay, cool. And you use that all the way through and through. Got it. That is money. Hey, yeah. so before we dive into like, you know, other stuff and miscellaneous stuff, but what is the common objection that we see when it comes to virtual sales is giving social, giving banking, right? Yeah. Um, how do you guys overcome that? How do you teach people how to overcome that? So a lot of people, um, when you do get that objection, it's because you made it weird. You know, you're just a disgruntled employee. I'm just trying to do my job. And it's a they, they. So usually it's like, you're filling everything out. Okay, so what they need is your social okay, for verification. Okay, and it's they, it's not me. I'm not asking for it. Okay, so for example, if I'm doing Aetna, Aetna is going to need your social. Okay, this is tied directly to your medical records through the Medical Information Bureau. 
They're going to verify uh, everything that you've told me is true. They, not me, not doing anything for me. Banking, they're going to need your banking. Okay. Um, you throw them identity reasons. They verify your identity as well as money laundering. It's also part of the process for underwriting. Now, if you do it right, here's the thing is that people are normally used to just following directions. Yep. Right. And the more questions you ask and the more you have them answer, the more that they will just keep giving you those answers. Mm -hmm. Right. So it's like, does that make sense? Yes. Okay. And then you're just, when you get to the application part of it, you are narrating what you are doing as well. All the way to the point of like, hey, give me one sec. I'm going to go ahead and open the application. I just got to log in. All right, got it. Start a new application here. Okay, date of birth, first name, date of birth. I got your date of birth. We'll make sure I didn't mess that up. Boom, fill that out. All right, they're going to have me ask a couple more questions. And you're reading the questions out and letting them answer it right away. Because then, again, it's just... They're answering, they're answering, they're answering, answering, answering. That's why through the entire presentation, you always got to ask a question that is, you already know the answer, right? Again, I, like when I explain the different coverages, like, hey, just to make sure we're on the same page, you want day one coverage, you want to make sure that's immediate, doesn't expire, it's locked in, premium doesn't go up. You want to make sure that's the type of coverage you're looking for, right? Yep. Yes. Okay. It's all yes, 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 yes. This is what I want to do. This is exactly what I'm asking for. This is what I'm looking for. So when you get to the, again, the application, you narrate what you're doing. You're still asking questions. It's not me. I'm not asking for a social. I'm not asking for your data, but I'm not asking for this stuff. They this is, are. you know, they are. This is Aetna is asking. Okay, this is Mutual of Omaha. This is America asking. I'm not asking anything. So you got to remove yourself from the presentation and be the third party. I'm just here to help you fill out your application. That's why you say it in the beginning. Hey, the last thing I'm going to do is I'm going to help you fill out your application to the carrier for coverage. Not me. I'm helping. I'm doing you a favor. And you'll get a lot of people to be like, oh, they, oh, you do that. Yeah. Oh, uh, yeah. Thank you. I'm like, right. I'm like, thank you. <laughs> like, <laughs> thank yeah. you for doing what I'm supposed to be doing. <laughs> yeah. Right. So it makes That's it money, man. Narrating the app. Hey, I'm opening the app right now. Wait, give me yep. one second. I'm logging in. Got it. It's open. What's your date of birth again? How do I spell your first name? And you're literally just narrating every step of what you're doing. Mm -hmm. Wow, that is money. Never even thought about that. Right? Because most people just thought. go, so Harold, where are you born? And they're like, no, 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 no. Like they're, yeah. they're answering for you. And then they get to the weird question. Hey, by the way, I need your social. Mm -hmm. You know, by the way, I need your social, not okay. they need your social. Man. Yeah. That's clutch, so, bro. Yeah, reading the questions off as and it's funny. Some of us will go, "Hey, I, I'm gonna have to ask these questions again. They're gonna be repetitive. They might be a little silly, okay? But I do have to answer the ask the questions. And you're just going through the whole thing again, all right? And there's just yes, 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 all the way through and through. Right. I Here's love me. that, man. I love that. Um, besides Social Security and banking, do you hear any objections that you usually get on the phone? um like they don't want to do it right now they want to think about it they want to do it another time what do you do about those you will get a, some people that don't want to think about it now it's the why number one solidifying the why making sure that it's affordable for your budget so if it's done if you do everything right you're already assumptive closing them the whole way through and through but if they're wanting to think about it there's something missing it's always something missing probably not fitting within their budget maybe they may fibbed a little bit on their budget Okay. Or maybe they, you can even ask them, hey, when most people want to think about it, is it, is it the coverage amount? Is it not enough? Is the uh, premium a little too high? Or did it just not make sense to you? Right. And you'll find out. They'll tell you, well, you know, budget. Okay. Hey, you know, what most people do in your same exact situation, they start with the, the lower amount next year. I'll give you a call when we do your review and then we'll increase it to the 15,000. Or we could just keep increasing until we get to your desired amount. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Okay, great. Keep it pushing. Right. <laughs> so, so you guys, what what carriers do you guys mostly write? A lot of Aetna. A lot of Aetna. Because it's a security question. They have the easiest app. Well, Merico now is on the easiest apps. <laughs> right. Well, on the easiest app board with that security uh, number. Right. 
Yeah. So you guys push a lot of Aetna in America. See, that's the other thing that I was going to ask. Say that again? Mutual as well. Is Mutual's app that easy now? Because, mm. dude, I, I could have swore iPipeline is a pain, bro. Yeah. Oh, iPipeline is a pain. Definitely. So I'm like, sometimes, especially for brand new agents, the, the reason why I say this, right, is because, like, you kind of answered my question. The two easiest apps in the entire you know, industry, in my opinion, America's Eagle Premier's new app is very simple. Mm-hmm. Aetna's app is very simple. And you know the beauty of both those companies? They have practice apps. Mm-hmm. Aetna has something called Sandbox, which a brand new agent can go in there, put fake information, see how the actual app application runs. It's awesome. America does the same thing with the SE demo site, right? So for me, it's like brand new agents should practice things. So by the time they actually get into an actual appointment, they don't go, hey, Harold, how do I, I can't move next, man. It won't, it won't <laughs> let me move next. It's like, dude, come on, man. You know what I mean? So, but that's just me. That's the reason why I like those two apps because they're, they're simple and you can't really mess them up. And not only that, but they have practice apps for brand new agents to work with. Yeah. You know, it's just money, but. I tell them screen share, we're good. Say that again? I tell them to screen share. I'm like, oh, you're on, you're on Zoom with the team, you know, our office. Right. While they're talking to a client, I'm just like, oh, they said yes. What do I do? Hit E app. Ooh. All right. Screen share that. And right. then on the um, on Zoom, you can um, I can draw whatever on whatever your screen share. Mm. So I, I will go on there and start drawing and telling them to click this, click that, click this, click there. I love so that. Run into any hiccups. We're good. I got you. Yeah, see, like we don't do our Zooms, just people just come in and die. We don't do the whole break room thing. We don't draw on yeah. people's screen. We don't make them share <laughs> screens. Like, man, this is how you know. This is how you know Harold got it down. All right, cool. Uh, a few more questions before we wrap this up, man, because we have a QA section at the end, too. You know, some people are wondering, but, you know, I kind of know the answer, but I want you to share with it. What lead types are you guys running as a group and yourself included? Like, sure. You know, I'm very big on saying that, hey, there's those, there's only three types of virtual sales, one call closes, live transfers, and booking them for the following day, like a traditional mortgage appointment would be, mm-hmm. right? What are you guys doing? And how do you, what kind of lead sources are you guys running? Sure. Internet leads. We run internet leads, any type of internet. You got all different vendors that run internet leads. We do internet. Okay. Um, our team prefers new internet life leads. Yep. Got, uh, we do run the final expense YouTube as well. Uh, you got mortgage protection one month, two month. You got final expense one month, and then of course your mailers. Right. So how many, in, in terms of percentages, how many people are running mailers in your group? Um, we are. Everything is a mixture. Right. So everybody works all the lead types. So you got to be a well-rounded agent. Period. Right. Okay. If you only know how to do one thing. You're not going to be able to grow a team. It's just not possible. Right. You have to be well-rounded. So everybody knows how to work all the different lead types. So let's say, you know, because sometimes mortgage protection, one month, there's not very many. Right. Sometimes, you know, and if somebody's sitting there like, okay, I do need leads. They're not sitting there like, all right, well, I'll just wait. Like, no, they'll, they'll pick up new internet life leads and ready to go. Right. So it's a mixture. Everybody works at all. Right. It's just. You know, again, internet, we even the live transfers, everybody has live transfers. They supplement in between, you know, appointments. Some people on the weekends in the morning turn on the um, live transfers. Um, if it's like sometimes people will jump on when they don't normally work, boom, live transfers. Yeah, but for the most part, everybody works all different leads. And that's why we break our rooms out into different lead types. And you can see that somebody's in each one of those rooms. And see, that's the other thing, right? Like I, I picked this up from you. It's like, let's say you're trying to protect 10 families that week. Mm-hmm. You know, if, if you only have one type of lead source, it's going to be hard for you to fill all 10 families with one lead source. But you might get two to three live transfers, two to three one call closes, two to three, you know, like mailers or, or you know, uh, appointments that you book for the, the following day or that evening. Like, you don't get it all in one lead type. You run everything because everything works, right? Mm-hmm. Like that's, that's the reason why this is so money for me is because, you know, back then when I hit the field, man, like, like I was a field guy like you, mm-hmm. everybody was like, oh, you, you only run, you know, mortgage. I'm like, no, not true. Because back then when I was running the field, there was no such thing as COVID. So people <laughs> that actually had jobs, 
we're working. And so you can only run mortgage at night. Exactly. What do you do during the evening or the morning? You run final expense, you run internet leads and see that. So what I, you know, my, my 10, 10 families helped was, you know, four to five in mortgage, two to three with internet leads, two to three with final expense leads. And you got a mixture of everything. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? At the end of the day, man, I tell people this all the time. The only thing you care about is a person knowing on the other line that you're coming there for life insurance. That's it. If they both, if you and them know that it's for life insurance, bro, we're game. Yeah. You know what I mean? So, Hey, if you guys have any questions, feel free to drop it in the Q and a, um, as we, as we wrap this up too, do you use anything like a digital business card or any of that with your clients ever? Yeah. I mean, you're sending out like, um, you know, with the business cards, you know, you can like see a preview of it, screenshot mm-hmm. it, <laughs> keep it, send it out. There you yeah. go. And then, you know, I have ones with like my image on it. Right. Um, showing my pretty face. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. With license numbers on it, you know. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Um, you know, the other thing too is, and I'll, this is the last thing before we hop into the questions. Y'all came from a place like most people complain about leads. They go, oh man, you know, these leads, these leads are harder work, difficult to work. Mm-hmm. Bro, where you guys came from? <laughs> You know what I mean? Like what's because y'all came from a place where y'all leads were for real. Like it, I can't I can't tell y'all because you would easily know. But like that was definitely bait and switch. Oh, 100 percent. You know what I mean? Yes. Like this is this ain't it. So when you guys got here and ran these Internet leads, you're like, man, they actually fill this out for life insurance. Mm-hmm. You know, what's interesting is that coming over here actually was it was an interesting transition because you're so used to that bait and switch style. So like you're thinking when you're calling an internet lead, like I got to bait and switch them somehow. They're like, no, 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 I'm not trying to sell you. It's like, wait, yeah, I am. You feel this out. Like, <laughs> <laughs> so you're, you're, you're again, it's that mindset uh, switch was so difficult for a lot of people in the beginning, just because it's so different. It's not the same. There's a lot of people are like, oh, I'm going to, you know, come here and thinking like, oh, I'm going to be good. I got this. Like, I get it. Yes, we have the skills there. Skill set is there, but just it's not the same. Right. The same. And see, the people that start here, they don't know how bad it is where oh, you yeah. come from. You know what I mean? Like, there's a lot of people on here that would be they would be so much better of agents if they started where you were just to know how <laughs> bad it was and then came here. You know, the people that are born in this company are freaking like born with a silver spoon in their mouth, bro. Like they they legitimately do not know how well they have it. I can't say it any other way. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And then like people stay at the company you came from for like a 40% comp. Yeah. Right. And and they got to work. And like from what I've heard from other people that came from the company, (laughs) it's like if the person at the top liked you, they can give you a little bit more leads. If they didn't like you, you only got this much. And that's all you got for the whole month. That's true. You know? Very true. So like, unlike here, like, like Harold, you can go to CRM and buy as much as you want. Like you don't have to wait for Isaiah's approval. That's the yeah. beauty of this whole thing. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, you have full control of your business. It's, it's interesting with a lot of people when they come over here, I'm like, Hey, they're like, what time do I need to get on the zoom? And I'm like, I don't well, when you work, dude, like I'm not, I don't need you to hear pretending like you're here. Like the last company, just pretending to be there, pretending to work. Like, I don't, that's fine. dude. go pick up your kids. It's okay. You can do that. Go grab right. lunch. It's okay. Right. So it, it's so it's you full control. And, and the thing is, is like, and I'm telling, telling everybody like, Hey, look, you can go on the CRM and buy your own leads. I, I can't prevent you from doing that. <laughs> That's on you. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. That's awesome, man. Well, Hey, we're going to dive into some of this Q and a, um, and Harold, once again, dude, I appreciate you so much, bro. Yeah, absolutely. Yes. For those of you that are asking, this is recorded. This will be on YouTube in like three hours. Um, and if you can hit up Harold and thank him for being wonderful on this call. Um, first question is what is your weekly lead flow budget look like? So when you start, obviously everybody has different budgets right off the bat, right? Now I always tell everybody you need to have a minimum of a hundred leads to be calling at all times. Mm -hmm. So the thing is, it's a little different for virtual because we can get leads all the time, Right. So it's whenever you feel the activity slows down, you know, quote unquote slows down, go get more leads. Go get more leads. Don't stop yourself. So it's a little bit of different flow when it comes to working virtual, because if you, let's say, get grab a hundred on a Monday and you're working 
and um, you're, you either book appointments, write some business, especially if you write business. If you're doing sitting, call the close, and you write like, you know, three to four or five policies in the next two, three days, oh, go, you need to get more leads. You shouldn't be, you shouldn't just, uh, uh, oh, let me try to squeeze. Right. And that's, again, that comes from the last company, squeezing them out and trying to get that last drop. <laughs> it's like, right. no, add to it because you're going to lose momentum. Yeah. It's the worst thing you could do for yourself. You lose the momentum. Now you have to pick it back up. Mm, you don't want to do that. Just add to, add to, add to. I love that. And see, like you, you, you told me something the other day, like you, you mentioned it kindly here too. You go, Hey, our group likes the new internet life leads, not necessarily the instance or the one month or three month. We like the new internet leads do with the discounts that they pop up with work spots. Oh yeah. Like yeah. The, now yesterday's discount was 45% off. You get those leads for like $4 and 50 cents. <laughs> yeah. That's definitely <laughs> our rule is follow the discount. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I love that. I love that. That's awesome. Um, cool. Somebody uh, asked a question about schedule. I can kind of answer that part. Uh, yep. As far as schedule wise, work a normal schedule, work your 40 hour work week for yourself. You know, you control your schedule, take care of yourself, right? It's you objectively want to make sure you do a minimum of three to maybe four presentations a day is what you want to get to, you know, but you really just have to push yourself because again, it's a little different. It's not set appointments, not all the time. Uh, no show rate is a little, is slightly higher on the phone just because they just don't have to pick up a call. You do just, you know, when you're in the field, you show up to their house. They right. can't run away from their own house. <laughs> so, <laughs> right. <laughs> right. So, but work, work a normal schedule. I have a guy who came from a uh, corporate job um, and all he did was just run the same exact schedule here. He works a nine to five and that's it. It's clockwork. Nine o'clock, already running. Five o'clock. Sometimes he'll push a little bit later, but other than that, he's like, all right, guys, I'm done. Clocking out. Right, right, right. That mental clock in, clock out. But he writes a lot of business. Right. That's money, man. And, and see, that's the uh, the other piece is you, you tell me that although the premiums are a little bit lower when you run virtual, but the persistency is stronger. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And, and that's money because there's a trade off right there. Like in, in the house, bro, I get you for 250, 300 all day long. Like no problem. Yeah. But like, you know, the chance of me getting backdoored by another agent, this, then the other, you know, the chance of someone not answering the phone is very high. Or, you know, when we call leads, I already got it taken care of. Click like. I want my clients to do that to everybody. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. So like, um, and so, so like virtual sales, like your persistency is stronger. You know, yeah. that, that was one of the big myths. I, I think we, we used to talk about is your persistency is crap, da, 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 but that's not true. Now that we've looked at the numbers and the statistics, they're, they're just as high, if not higher than face to face, but the premiums are a little bit lower. Yeah. But, you know, you got to still work, which is the reason why, you know, like Harold said, it's a 40 hour work week, man. You know, so cool. Um, how many dials do you make daily? You think? It depends, right? If you're, of course, you want to do two two hundred and fifty is always a number, right? That you want to be targeting, right? Two hundred fifty calls. At the end of two hundred fifty calls, you you should either have done two to three sits already, okay? But we also have live transfers coming in, and you also have booked appointments. So it, it varies, right? But your goal is two, 250 dial a day is just like your minimum goal. See, I, I want to dig in that, man. Like mm -hmm. that, like your answer to that question is like how, if I had to get you know, back in the field and do it, that's how I would do it. I would have mm -hmm. live transfers on with as many companies as I could. Mm -hmm. I would literally have my leads in front of me and one call closing people. Because if a live transfer came in, I just stopped dialing. Yep. Right? And I can take this call. And once I'm done with that call, I go back to dialing. Right. And some of these people I'm not going to be able to set today. So I'll set later on this evening or I'll set tomorrow. But it's like I'm working all three at once. I'm not just working on one avenue. You know, yeah. and that's how you maximize the virtual premium. Like my opinion, like Harold, am I wrong? Like for thinking that? No, you're absolutely right. You have to work all the different lead types, all the different lead vendors. Again, having those live transfers come in, especially if you, you know, having multi-state and multi-time uh, zone. So right off the bat, if you're going to work virtual, you have to have the different time zones. You have to. It's like you're, it's going to be in your favor. Mm. So like for some people who love to work mortgage, you can work mortgage the whole entire day if you just follow the time zone. Right. Right. You just start in the East Coast. And if you work in the evening, right, and then 
just follow the the time zones all the way right. through to California or even to Alaska or Hawaii. Right. You can follow it through and always be working evening appointments. I love that. That'd be smart. So if you if you were to get an, an agent, you know, brand new agent, get them non-resident licenses in every time zone. Mm, another nugget. I love it. Yeah. Cool. What's your strategy on uh, on uh, attracting new agents? So social media, you know, I know we were talking about YouTube, social media, posting videos. It's making it so that you know it's possible is really important. Showing that it is possible. We do have a duplicatable system. It can be done as long as you apply it, you know, all the knowledge properly. Right. So just just broadcasting what our our agents are doing is very important. You know, it's like, hey, this person is writing an app. This person's writing an app. Hey, this person's writing an app. Look at this person writing an app. Right. It, and it's constant as long as that stuff just keeps coming in. Another person writing an app, another person. It's just it's easy. What do you guys use for your chat system? Are you guys on Slack, Telegram, or what do you guys we use? Slack. Gotcha. Yeah. Cool. And you, just, and you guys just go, hey, you know, so and so, Chris is writing an app. Boom. And everybody just hops on and watches Chris do it. Yeah. Well, here's the thing we're in Zoom. That's so good. mainly our whole team is in Zoom now. Generally, all of the um, like management team is we like make them a host. And when you're in the the breakout rooms, there's a box. There's a box you can click that lets you broadcast to all the rooms. So we'll broadcast. Stephen is in is doing a mortgage protection in room one, and then it goes to every room, and then you'll just see like people just start switching into that other room. Right, right, right. To listen. Yeah. So, and then you'll see people like, boom, you'll see people's phones show a recording like, oh, look, it's crushing it. Right. Yeah. That's cool, man. Hey, last question. And uh, this is from my buddy, Patty. He said, are you, are you uh, able to share your outbound dialing script? Sure. If you even have one. I don't yeah. Know. Well, we have like an outline that we run. Cool. Is, like there, is, there, is there a way we can get a copy of that? Because uh, yeah. your stuff is gold, bro. Yeah. I'll send it out to you. I love it, dude. Definitely. So, hey, Harold, I appreciate you again, man. And like I said, if there's anything that I can do to return the favor or anybody on our team that can do the same, please let us know. Because, you know, yeah. this call, man, like this is the nitty gritty stuff that we don't get to pick up and learn about. I, I seriously believe that. Like when you told me, hey, man, at, at the other company, we used to have to practice our presentation in front of our manager before they let us out in the field. I was like, that's why you are assassins, because they don't just let anybody go out. Yeah. You know what I mean? And so like, that's how you learn the word tracks and all that stuff, dude. Like it's so good, man. So Harold, once again, I appreciate you. Thank you so much. And uh, everybody let's have a great one and let's go. Uh, let's make it a great week. March ends this upcoming Thursday. So let's have a great end of March and let's bang out. Uh, let's start April with the bang. So have a great one guys. We'll see you guys soon.